Welcome to the month of June, 30 days old about gin. Shining a spotlight on those that will make you grin. Fun facts and proper tastings and cocktails Friday afternoons. Discover many different brands and be influenced by me. Some for old. Well, hello everyone. You are all very welcome to join me, Psalm for All, for this seventh day of June, my annual 30-day salute to gin during the sixth calendar month. Now today is another weekday, and I'm showcasing another gin. And I'm taking my taste buns over to Scotland, to the Isle of Mull to be exact, for a sip of Tobamori gin. Now the Isle of Mull is listed as the second largest island uh, amongst the Inner Hebrides uh, and it's home to Scotland's Highland Games along with two distilleries, one of which of course is Tobamori. Now while this brand has only been in, in existence since about 2019, um, the distillery itself and the grounds that it's located on actually have a long history that dates back to the 1790s when on the same site as Tobamori, the Ledeg distillery was born. Now Ledeg was a whiskey distillery and that operated for well over a hundred years before ceasing operations in the 1930s due to global economic conditions. Things like the depression, uh, things like uh, prohibition in the US, they all, they all kind of ganged up and a lot of distilleries around that time you know, ceased operations and Ledeg at that time was one of them as well. However, with new ownership in 2013, things started to gear up again and uh, on-site distillation started to happen again in 2019 with two brands being distilled on site. Ledeg Whiskey, they brought that name back, and the newcomer brand, Tobamori Gin. Now the gin itself is the creation of master distiller Julianne Fernandez, and she, yes, she, uh, is the person at the helm uh, of brands such as Deanston and Bonhaviden, right? Because all of these brands fall under the Distel name. So Tobamori and Ledeg and Deanston and Bonhaviden, they're all under the Distel um, or Distel uh, umbrella, ownership umbrella. Now, Ms. Fernandez claims that the unusual shape of the gin stills helped to give Tobamori its distinct and vibrous citrus forward taste and notes. And while that's a fair statement and likely true, Ms. Fernandez is the master distiller, the stills are not the only things unusual at play over a Tobamori. You see, the recipe for this gin includes juniper, of course, um, coriander, and citrus, right? No big surprise there. But the recipe also uses Hebridean tea and heather and some sugar kelp and scotch lavage, which, as I recently just learned, is a plant in the celery family that grows in the cracks of rocks along coastal shores. Oh, and there's also a splash of new make whiskey that finds its way into the neutral grain spirit um, that's used as the base distillate. So lots going on here, not a run-of-the-mill operation at all. So all of the botanicals, all those things I just mentioned, the heather and the tea and the lavage and all that, they're all steeped in the distillate for a minimum of 24 hours for maximum flavor and aroma extraction. And that little whiskey splash that I just mentioned, right, that gets thrown in, um, that's done to add another botanical element. Um, so it's not really done for the base so much, but it's actually done um, as, a, as an adjunct, as, a, as another botanical. And all of that said and done, the finished product comes in at 43.3% alcohol by volume, and of course, like most gins, is clear. Okay, so nice background. Let's dive into the gin itself. First, we're going to calibrate our nose, right? We do that four times. So three up and downs, and then on the fourth, we get a big sniff. So one, two, three, four. Oh, we get rid of the mosquito. Okay, so a nice big inhale, and on the nose, very bright. 
right? There's resiny pine, there's orange, there's grapefruit. Um, all that jumps right out at you. I get notes of coriander. I get some hay. Um, I get sea air, so sea salty air. Not overly salty, but just that fresh sea air. And then when you stick your nose in at the bottom, you're actually getting a little bit of that malty creaminess on the nose. Um, there is that malty smell there. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very perfumey. Okay, so on the palate, launch you. We always swish it around. Want to coat those five flavor receptors that we have in our mouth. And wow, that is a fresh gin. The pine is there. Um, there's a little bit of floral notes, but the grapefruit pith is huge. Also getting that uh, mineral note, um, sea salt um, is coming through. I get the citrus, the orange and the lemon. I mean, it's all there. Um, very bright though. Not in a bad way, very nice, very fresh. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of spice. Um, like a little bit of baking spice almost. Getting some malt, right? That maltiness, even though it's only a little bit of a splash, it adds a lot. And I'm getting some herbal tones. So lots going on. Lots going on. And the mouth feels pretty creamy. It's, it's a pretty luscious mouthfeel. Um, not heavy, just, just a little creamy and a little luscious. Finish. I'm talking, I'm talking. I can still taste that creamy malt. A little minerality still lingering, a touch of floral. Very nice, very fun, very, very nice. Quite tasty, um, and to me, this screams uh, to be used on a hot day in a gin and tonic cocktail or a salty dog, uh, which has grapefruit um, in it um, and salt. Just those two jump right out on me. I'm sure it's versatile and other things as well, but those are the two that I would immediately go for with this gin. Zippy, vibrant, great way to beat the heat. All right, so does all of this sound intriguing to you? Well, good news if you are in Ontario, Alberta, and or British Columbia. Uh, here in Ontario, the LCBO has this for surprisingly low price of $39.95, uh, stock number 22455. In Alberta, I'm seeing it retailing for about $46 a bottle, uh, and in BC, about $49.95. Um, so, Bit of a better deal here in Ontario. Not seeing it in Quebec uh, or in the Maritimes. Doesn't mean it's not there, it just means I can't easily find it. In the US, I'm seeing it only online through online uh, providers and they're ringing the bell close to 50 bucks a bottle USD. I'm finding that a bit hard to believe that it's if it is in the US that some of the your local uh, liquor stores uh, or even grocery stores, that they wouldn't have it for cheaper. So. You know, I'd say this is one to keep an eye out for, and if you see it in the $40 range or under, um, you know, worth taking a flyer on. Worth checking out in the U.S. around those price points for sure. For my friends in the U.K., if you're intrigued, you know, you can see it there all throughout the U.K., um, even, even in Ireland. Uh, I'm seeing it for around that uh, 25 euro mark. Um, so, you know, good price for the quality that's in that gin for sure. All right, so folks, there we have it. Tobamori Gin, straight up. No fancy gimmetry with the name. Just straight up, Tobamori Gin. I like it. Straightforward, comes right at you. Perfect. That's showcase number three. We're three for three this week, folks. Tomorrow, I'll have one final product showcase for the week. Um, and I invite you, of course, to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And also to please both like and share my posts. I know that with your help, together with your help, that we can rid any preconceived negative notions there are out there that people have regarding gin. And we can also help spread the good juniper word. There is a lot of great stuff out there. There's a gin for everyone. I promise you. Until tomorrow, stay safe, be well, and cheers from Psalm for All.